Hey everyone! Uh, it's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue coming to you live for this week's, so the first day of this week's cricket chat. A lot of excitement in my house this morning because our one of our dogs, uh, one of our corgis, Benjamin, decided to fly the coop and um, Teddy Bear's all excited about it because you can hear him squeaking his toy. So we ended up having to, I ended up having to traipse around for him at the, <laughs> all over the city. We live near the electric light plant and one of the great workers there called me and read his tags and called me. So that's a bit of a walk or probably a run. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Lisa. Yeah, it was a bit of a of an escape um, that he made while I just let him out in the backyard and the yard is fenced. So, but he is a very sprite dog. And um, once he got out, I'm sure he regretted it because <laughs> he was easily captured. Um, good morning, Penny, good morning. Um, and so a little bit of confusion this morning and I apologize for being a little flustered, but um, yikes, it's so much fun. Good morning, uh, Nancy. So this morning, we're starting a whole new week of Cricket Chat, which is really exciting. And I wanted to talk about the iPad app um, versus the desktop app. Um, for Cricut Design Space. I'm going to wait until a few more people come on before we go ahead and start working. Uh, we had a great week last week. We did some really fun projects and I posted the links um, to almost all of the projects from last week. Um, Saturday night's uh, recording got um, corrupted so I was unable to post that on YouTube and I apologize for that but if you are looking for Saturday night's date night in which we did a lighthouse and a lighthouse keepers um, quarters from SVG cuts um, it, you can find it on Facebook but it, I cannot it got corrupted I could not um, put it on YouTube I hope that that's not the start of something bad but um so and also while we were doing the lighthouses which they were so much fun to make and um really quite simple but it requires a lot of glue and patience um we started talking about next week and next week is uh, or is this week <laughs> saturday which will be um the 4th of July, Saturday night, um, will be the 4th of July, but around here, there is, everything's canceled, so I asked folks um, if, if uh, they would like to do cricket date night uh, for Saturday night, and I got people mostly saying yes, they would, and so we talked about a couple of different projects, one being um, a carousel, and that's what's on my screen right now, is a carousel that's also from SVG Cuts, and it's part of this carousel ride. It's an older file, um, but it is really uh, quite beautiful, and um, of course made from paper, and it's actually a cupcake holder, so I thought that would be fun, because since it's 4th of July, I'll just make sure I get some cupcakes that we can put in there to do cupcake holding cupcake holder um, carousel. So we're going to be doing this this Saturday night, if you can make it, on uh, Cricket Date Night. It's a, I'll post a link for the carousel. Um, and and we'll do that this this uh, this Saturday night if you can make it. Uh, otherwise, it'll be on the replay. So this week um, we have a lot of other exciting things to talk about today. Especially, I wanted to talk about the iPad app versus the desktop app. So what you're seeing here is actually the upload section of the desktop app. Um, where I uh, regularly do my uploads, and I've shown you, I buy a lot of SVGs. Good morning, Shelly. Nice to see you. Um, hi, Patty. Yeah, this is exciting. Um, so 
I buy a lot of SVGs. I use a lot of Cricut um, Design Space images and I try to show you how to find them and use them. But one of the things I really, really like about Design Space is that I'm able to take uh, SVGs from other designers and use them in Design Space and they're all pretty much ready for me to cut out and in, in whatever pick, uh, paper I want to cut it or whatever material I want to cut it out in. And it makes it makes for a whole lot of extra really fun projects one of the people that I really love to buy um, files from is uh, let's see if I can find get her is um, a woman named Lori Whitlock okay and um, I talk about her a lot because she has a lot of files um, let me f try to find her website and recently and she has these every month she has these sales and sometimes um, good morning Maggie good morning Suzette sometimes she has um, these uh, like 50% off sales and usually once a month she has a 30% off sale and she sells SVGs they're really adorable um, she also sells SVGs for companies like doodlebug um, you can see on the left hand side of her screen and um so what it, what I end up doing is, you know, I end up, uh, I'm on my desktop and I'm like sort of looking around and I buy something or sometimes I'm just kind of like relaxing and I'm looking through her site because she adds so many, many files like all the time and, um, so sometimes I'm just kind of browsing from my iPad to see what's new. And when she has a sale, um, because I'm not always in my studio, which is where I am now, uh, it, which is where my desktop is, I, I tend to um, want to buy them on my iPad, but then I didn't know how to upload them into the iPad app. So what I used to do is I would buy them, place the order, buy them, and then wait till I got to my studio to download them. Well, this weekend I said, you know what? I'm finally going to learn how to download them in the iPad app so that I can show everyone. And I was like so excited when I found this out on Saturday that I just needed to, I needed to show you um, that. So, so here I am in and, and on my desktop in Laurie's site, but also on my um, iPad here also, I'm on her, on her site. And actually this weekend, I placed an order for all of these files. Good morning, Bren. Good morning, Suzette. Um, so I, I placed an order for all of these files. Normally, I would just do that. I would buy the order on my iPad, wait until I got here, in my studio and then come here and then sort of look up my my latest order you see and then download from here but i have all apple products like i have an ipad a phone and an apple mac whatever they call it computer and we have an iCloud um and you know if if you are also in the same boat as me with the iCloud and everything what what I don't take advantage of is that they're all linked together all of the accounts are linked together and so um I can do something on my iPad and then come here and do it on my Macintosh or I can um, do some things all all on the iPad from downloadable files so I'm gonna move you a little tiny bit just so I can reach okay um, but so here's my iPad now I don't know if this works on um, on a tablet I really don't um, but I'm going to show you for the iPad and maybe it can, maybe someone can verify that it does work that way too. But on my iPad, um, I have the Cricut uh, web the desktop app, which by the way is free and you can get it at the Apple Store, App Store, um, Cricut Design Space and you can download it for free. Um, and usually uh, I play around in here, but then I usually come to my desktop um, to do what I want to cut because that's where my machine is. But I started thinking, you know, that's kind of limited. And I, I think that more people probably in my boat where they have, you know, an iPad and a desktop um, and maybe they could learn how to use it uh, 
to, you can cut straight from your iPad, which, you know, yeah, you can do, but I, I've just never done. Um, so I wanted to show you. Um, so this is the iPad app, and when you open it up, here's what you get, okay? And I just want to show you up here. See here it says Home and then Canvas, and it's shaded out, but it says Make. And this is what you you come to, okay? So when you open up the app, this is what you see. And the first thing you see is this plus sign with the circle around it. That's to start a new project, okay? But what's really nice here is that it will show you all of these. Um, these are all projects that the design team at Cricut have made for you. And if you wanted to make them, all you do is click on them, okay? And so, for instance, if we want to make this, it's called uh, Thinking of You. You can go and look at all of these things, okay, that are, you know, what do I need and what do I have to cut? And then how do I assemble it and where is more information on that? And then at the bottom, you get the choice of customize which I don't know if I just touched, but let's see if I just touched customize. When you hit customize, it brings you actually to your canvas, which is actually the second thing here. You see, the second thing is the canvas. This is where you could make changes to whatever that you know, whatever that project is, say it was personalized or you wanted to personalize it, you could personalize it here. Um, and so that is just when you go to the home page or whenever you open up, this is what you're you're faced with all right this is what you your choices are so what i do when i come on here is i usually just hit this plus sign um and we're going to replace it and so here is my canvas this is what you normally see when you're logging into design space on your computer hi susan hi felicia um so it's a blank canvas very much looks like what you are um, seeing when you go onto your desktop okay and here you can see all of your all of your projects and that includes the projects that you may have saved in design space from your desktop okay um, and you can also see things that you've downloaded or uploaded um, to your to your uh, uploaded to your design space account, okay? So if you wanna see what you've created and you're on your iPad, you can actually go home and in this down, in this categories thing, let me make sure I click it with my, okay. Here it has these choices, my projects in the cloud, my projects on this iPad, my favorites and my ready to make projects, okay? So this is where all of those projects that you designed or saved um, reside. Now, the difference between the projects in the cloud versus the projects on this iPad is that you can do this locally, say if you don't have internet access, but generally speaking, most people will save when they save, they're saving it into the cloud. Um, so that your choice most likely, especially if you have regular internet access, is to look at your projects in the cloud. So when I click on that, it brings up, takes a, a second, um, but it brings up all my projects that I've ever created, right? All, and saved, that's the important part. So here are all my projects. So I'm able to um, have created a project in, uh, it, on my desktop, on my computer, let's say, um, and still access them with my iPad. That's really fun and important because let's say, you know, you're somewhere else or you're um, like me recently having been kind of stuck in bed for when I was sick. I'm able to sort of look at what projects I was already working on and that's just a lot, um, a lot more helpful than having to go and... Um, and come to my studio when I'm not feeling well, okay? Now, one of the things that you'll notice in some of these is that um, there are some, some pre-made, these are Lori Whitlock files that I uploaded, 
okay? So I wanna show you how to do that. So let's say we don't wanna look at an existing, um, we don't wanna look at an existing file, but we want to, having purchased some files from Lori's site, we want to bring it into our design space, right? Because you always have to do that. So there's this little button down here, or choice down here, called Upload. All right, it's right next to image. This is where you would add image or you do text or add a shape. So there's upload. So you click on that and you get this pop-up window, okay? Now, um, the pop-up gives us four choices. Take a photo, which I would think would be really interesting, but we're not gonna talk about today, okay? Um, select from a photo library, also interesting. Browse files or open uploaded images. So let's do the bottom one first, just so you can see. Um, open uploaded images. Now, you can see, and this is very similar to when you are um, on your desktop. Let me see if I can actually get there and show you that. Yeah, this is the same screen. See that? It is the same screen as this. Um, and so all of the images that I've uploaded, no matter where I've uploaded them to, are now available to me on my iPad. This is super helpful because let's say I happen to be in my studio and I downloaded something, but I wanna work on it on the go. As long as I upload it, here it is, okay? So that's pretty cool. But let's look at this. Let me see. Okay, I'm gonna move you again because uh, uh, uh. upload and we look at browse files sounds like a pretty innocuous thing so let's choose browse files now I have on my iPad an iCloud drive if you and everybody has an iCloud account, I believe, but you may need to download the drive for this at the App Store. It's free, okay? But um, it, you you may need to, to download it. But so let's say I want to browse my images of downloads, things that I purchased. I look for this file folder, downloads. And you can see here I have 13 items. I also have things on my desktop and other things, but I'm going to look specifically at downloads because I did indeed download some Lori Whitlock um, files over the weekend. And they came in as zips, okay? Um, and I wish that, uh, I'm gonna see if maybe, I, I wanna show you how they came in as zips because super important. All right, so here we are. I bought this pocket explosion box. So I'm gonna download it like this. <laughs> and we just click on that zip. Whoops, click on that zip. And it asks me, do I want to download it? Okay. And yes, I do. So I downloaded it. Now let's go back to our, our iCloud drive where downloads are. And let's see if we can't find. Here it is. See? It says LW for Lori Whitlock Pocket Explosion Box Zip. All right. Now you can't open a zipped file because remember it's sort of like a it's a smaller version of the whole file so that it can easily be downloaded. So you have to unzip it. Like think of it, it it's a jacket and you have to take and unzip it so you can see what's underneath the jacket, okay? So by clicking on it, I get these choices. Copy, duplicate, move, delete, info, tags, <laughs> and rename, okay, and share. Yep. Sorry, our, my, oh no, of course, <laughs> there's always something going on at my house. Um, I just wanna go back there. Okay, oops, I'm doing this wrong. Let me just get this. Shh, shh, shh. Sorry, sorry. 
How come I'm not I'm not getting what I want to do done here? I, mm. And the dogs are barking because our our um <sighs> our our uh, water's being delivered. Okay, so you're going to unzip it, and and there is a choice here to unzip it. And so here is the unzipped file. Okay. So what you get inside of the zip file is all of these things. One is a terms of use. It's just, you know, how you can use her file. This is the actual zip. This is the actual file. Let's go back. Shh, quiet, please. Quiet, please. Okay. There's a picture of the, of the image. That's a JPEG. And then you get actually two choices. You have this one here. It's called um, cut size. To be honest, I don't know. Um, I think it's probably the same thing, the SVG that we're looking for, but it's, it's a, it's a standardized cut size. I don't actually use that one, but I do use this one here. So if I click on that, whoops, wait, if I click on that. See, I wish my dogs would stop barking. Okay, here we go. So, um, so here is the file that I just downloaded. The pocket, um, the pocket explosion box. It's the entire file, and it's asking me to name it. This is very similar to when you're uploading onto Design Space. So I have to name it, and I'm just going to name it LW Pocket explosion all right and I'm gonna save it same thing as what you do on your design space okay so now it shows up in all the images that I've downloaded including the ones I've done earlier in the um, in the week uh, on my on my desktop here are my uploaded images remember that's that screen that we just saw on my the same screen has all of my uploads on it and then the the easy part is you would just click on that insert it and here it is you might have to make it bigger but here is the file so um, you no longer need to use a desktop to um, to upload files or even to cut files. Now you still need to um, make changes to the SVG the same as before, which includes when you have like these uh, these dashed lines here you need to attach them to the piece that it needs to go on because remember when you're uploading um anything they the designer can't attach those for you or at least they never were able to um, attach for you so in order to get this ready to be cut i would then have to um ungroup it which is here's the actions down here actions see this brings up ungroup. So I'm going to just ungroup and then I'm going to select, whoops, come on, ungroup. Did I do ungroup? Ungroup. Okay. So I'm going to select each piece here. And grouping is important because if you don't ungroup it and you try to attach the things, everything will cut in the same color and that's you don't want that so okay so I ungrouped and now I'm just touching on this one here which I have to attach so I go down here to attach and now those cut lines are attached to that particular piece same down here attach and here attach and here attach actually these ones too so now i have my file and i actually can cut it from my ipad isn't that great like i've ne i knew i could do it but um i just never did it before now one of the things that you have to be cognizant of is that you have to make sure your bluetooth because your maker or your explorer or even your joy are connected via bluetooth 
Absolutely, Dorothy, would be the same steps. So if you're on your iPhone or your Android device, yes, the same, the same steps, okay? So if you want to, if you thought, gee, I'd like to learn how to do this on my phone um, while I'm sitting in the doctor's office, this is, <laughs> this is something you could do. As long as you have an internet connection, you can do this, okay? Um, but so... What you need to make sure of is if you want to cut, you need to make sure that your machine is connected. So I'm going to go to settings and here on Bluetooth, I have to make sure my Bluetooth is on and that my maker down here is connected. This is also where you'd find your joy as well. Um, and so I connect that. So then when I go to here and I choose down here to make it, here I go. These are all my files. Now, one thing that's concerning me here is the size of these files. I'm going to have to go back. They're too, too small. Um, I'm going to have to go back and see what I did wrong there. But, uh... That shouldn't happen. So let's see. Let's go back to browse files. Oh, cut size. Okay, here we go. Now this is an old file from um from Lori. What's this? Don't know what this is. Hmm. This is an old file from Lori, so it's very possible, yeah, it wasn't sized. So what I'm going to need to do is, once I've got all those files attached, I'm going to have to reattach it, and then, make, whoops, detach, go back. There we go. Sorry, we're going to regroup it. I said attach, but we're going to group it, all right? And then we can make the changes like that, okay? So let me just show you that again. Let's start over because I feel like I kind of messed up and I want you to, I want you to understand the process. Okay, so I purchased something from Lori Whitlock's website as an SVG, and now I want to, and I downloaded it to my iPad, and now I want to bring, um, yeah, it probably needs to be resized, Amy. I want to bring it into my iPad so I can cut it on my maker from my iPad and totally take out the computer part of it. Okay, so I want to make sure I upload that file that I that I purchased. I go to browse files and in my locations, which here are my locations, my iCloud Drive, my iPad, and then all my favorites and everything. So I'm in my iCloud Drive and I'm going to downloads. Okay, downloads. And you'll see some of them are zipped. You have to unzip them, and there is an unzipping tool. All right? But then each will have its little file folder. So here is, this is a different one. This is the kitchen scale, and I get the terms of use, which is not what I need, but I should read. It has a picture of what I need. And then I have two choices. I have the vintage kitchen scale with, it just doesn't say anything, and then solid. So this is solid for if I want to use my scoring wheel, um, that's what it means by solid. But if I wanted to use the dashed cut lines that come with the file, then this is the one that I want. And I would click on it. It would take a second and it would say, okay, here's your file. You need to name it. So I'm going to name it Laurie Whitlock Vintage Scale. Now it's saving that file and it's showing me all the files that it's saved. Okay, so now I want to cut it. So I choose it and insert right down here. Okay. 
and there's my file, the whole file. Now, before I cut it, I need to make sure, just like I do with any time I upload um, an image, I need to make sure all of these dashed lines, and actually on this page, there's a print then cut here. So I need to, to just kind of tweak it a little bit before I go to cut it. So I need to select it all, and I'm going down here to actions. See that? Actions. And I'm going to ungroup it. All right. So now what I can do is so that I just want you to see the entire thing. So I have these individual pieces. Whoop. Undo that. These individual pieces that move sort of separately. And then I have to attach these lines to it. So it will cut with those cut lines on there. So I go to, here's my item. I have it selected. I go down here to attach. See that? Same with this one. Actions. And the thing that's different about, about, whoa, about this file, because these all need to be attached, okay, is that this one here actually is this piece plus, wait, so I can show you. So there is like the, you know, the scale. Uh, the needle. This is the background and this piece here, which um, to properly cut this, it's a print then cut. So you need to select it and go down to, whoops, edit, wait, actions. Here we go, actions and flatten it. And you notice that it looks different now because that's going to become a print then cut element that will then um, print then cut, okay? So I just wanna make sure I did all of these because it seems like this one doesn't wanna attach for some reason. Maybe it did attach. I don't know, okay. Okay, now, now that these items are all on my, um, all, all been sort of managed, I suppose, um, now I can look at how they will cut on the mats and make any changes that I need to. So here's my print then cut element. You notice that it has the, the uh, box around there. And then here's that little needle. Ah. And this is what I was worried about. See how this is what I was talking about, that the um, the score lines are not attached to the piece. The, the, the design space is thinking that they're two separate cuts and actually it, that it's so big that it's put them on one big long, the 12 by 24. We got to go back and change that. But here is this one and then in the black. So now from here, with the exception of this one, which I have to make a change to, I can actually go ahead and choose, make sure that my maker is attached to my Bluetooth. Wait, maker attached to my Bluetooth. Oh. Right? <laughs> it's trying to pair and it's asking me for a pin and I believe the pin is four zero. So I am, um... yeah, I know I did that Susan and it didn't work for some reason. Um, so let's go back and um, let me just cancel this out. Let's go back to the canvas, and for some reason, okay, to the box around there, attach. Let's go make it. Okay. Yep. 
Okay, so here, here's an interesting thing, um, is that both of these items want to cut out on a long mat. I'm not sure why, but you know, we can move these into their own mat so that we don't have to use a very long mat. And we do that by clicking on it, on that triple dot here, and we can do move object. Okay, and so we're going to choose new because we need to add this to a new mat. So let's choose new mat. And then this here, actually we don't need to move this one. But for some reason, this one here, so let's move object, move this one. Okay, here we go. Now we're cooking with gas, okay. So we have now, this is our main piece, this is our black pieces, these are our side pieces, and then we've also got the red piece and our print then cut. So now we're able to cut this from the iPad without having to do it from our computer. I hope I haven't confused you more than, um, more than helped you today. So I wanna just kind of um, go back here and just kind of show it to you again so that we can all make sure that it is done correctly. So let's go back and start fresh. All right, new project. We replace this project. We go to upload. We go to browse files. We're looking at our iCloud Drive and the downloads. Okay? Here's a new one. Cookie box, thinking of you. So I have a choice of, this is the JPEG, we don't want that. This is the terms of use, we don't want that. And then we have these two choices. So I'm gonna choose this one. Gonna bring it into uploads. I have to rename it, cookie box. And the, and where is it? It doesn't show up. Let's do this one. So here it is, there's the cookie box. Now I have to ungroup it, go to actions, ungroup. And then I have to make sure that those dashed cut lines are all attached. So I hit on that image and hit attach. Same with this piece. I need to attach it, attach. Okay, and then I actually have this piece that's a print then cut element. I'm gonna flatten it. And now it's ready. It's ready to make it. It shows me the pieces on my mat. For some reason that print, th oh, that's white. That's just a white cutout. There's my print then cut. And there are all my pieces. And I can just cut it from here. All right. And that is, <laughs> that is how you use your iPad to download then upload images from an outside designer and then actually proceed to get it ready to be cut and you can cut it on the maker. Um, I, I want to find out from you if you think that this has been useful to you. I'm sorry that, um, that it's been a little bit disjointed this morning, but, um, but I think that there's a lot of possibilities. Obviously you need to, um, you're going to need to, um, wh what's the word? You're going to need to play with it a little bit, but I hope that you found, um, this useful and that you will try instead of just being afraid of trying and waiting until you get to your laptop I mean, to your laptop or to your your desktop or whatever you'll try it okay um so that is today's cricket chat lesson um and uh, you know i'm trying to think what we've got on tap for this week obviously the beginning
beginning of, of the month. And with 4th of July coming, I'm going to try to squeeze one more patriotic um project in before the 4th of July. Um, I also just got a huge shipment in of infusible ink stuff. So I, I know I still need to show you those. Someone asked me if we would show them an explosion box and what that is. So I want to try to do that. And I also want to do more print than cut this week. Um, but um, if there's anything else that you're looking at wanting to do, will you let me know? Um, Will you let me know in comments um, of what you need to see, whether it's on the app or on the desktop, anything? Oh, I know, I remember, is fonts. Some people want to know how to make um, make something using fonts and the text box. Um, is that something that I've had requests for, but is that something you want to see? Let me know, okay? Let me know in the comments below and I will check out the comments. Um, and that is it. I'm, I, I guess I'm used to talking a lot longer. <laughs> now I have to go back to my regularly scheduled chaotic life. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and that you'll join me again tomorrow on Cricket Chat here on Facebook, Miss Rita to the Rescue. Thanks so much, everyone. You have a wonderful day. Take care. Okay.